नमस्कार दोस्तों लेट ए सिटी द यूट्यूब चैनल वेलकम्स यू वंस अगेन एट अनदर सेशन अनदर रिमार्केबल वीडियो डिजाइन कीपिंग इन माइंड एन टी ए नेट एग्जाम ऑफ इंग्लिश लिटरेचर एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू कवर सम important text some key text some path breaking text dealing with feminist theories all these works are very important most of them you must have heard about them but there may be some few ones so please pay full focus on this video and improve your chances for cracking this net okay friends the very first work if considered one of the earliest work dealing with feminist theory is a vindication of the rights of women it was originally published in 1792 it is a ground breaking work of literature by mary wollstonecraft it continues to inspire feminism and human rights movement you can see that it was written quite at an earlier date at that date even feminist theory was itself not a term but mary wollstonecraft laid some basic tenets some basic principles which helps which basically designed or formulated that uh, the principles which were later developed and argued by uh, uh, other feminist critics also Dear friends this seminal feminist work challenged the notion that women exist only to please men which was a typical patriarchal society's thinking and rather it proposed that women and men be given equal opportunities in all fields whether it is education work and politics Wollstonecraft wrote the book in part as a reaction to the Uh, famous philosopher Edmund Burke's reflection on the French Revolution. Here, I would like to add an interesting fact also that before writing Vindication of the Rights of Women, she has also written Vindication of the Rights of Man. So we can say she is rather a humanist, but she wants equality. Uh, for both men and women we all know that she was quite radical in her life also her daughter uh, we, we know mary we know by the name of mary shelley she continued her legacy by writing great novel frankenstein here are some important quotes from this book my own sex i hope will excuse me if i treat them like rational creatures instead of flattering their fascinating graces viewing them as if they were in a state of perpetual childhood unable to stand alone this was one of the charges she levied against the patriarchal society that it treated women as a perpetual child uh, who can never live independently taught from their infancy that beauty is women's scepter the mind shapes itself to the body and roaming around its gilt cage only seeks to adorn its prison we may find similar thematic lines in other feminist texts and especially of the later 20th century which shows how visionary mary wollstonecraft was in her vision regarding the root cause of uh, we can say caged feminism happy would it be for women if they were not only flattered by the man who loved them i mean who loved the individual not the sex so once again she is hinting at the problem at the we can say root cause of uh, weaker uh, consideration of femininity okay the second book uh, the second sex first published in 1949 it is once again a remarkable path breaking work and controversial from the beginning it is simon de beauvoir's book a critique of patriarchy and it continues to challenge social political and religious categories used to justify women's inferior status all those social political and religious uh, uh, phenomena or theories or concepts that that are used by man or society 
to justify uh, that women is better if she remains inferior to man or in other words she can't just be uh, she can't be equal uh, to man now dear friends uh, this book by simon de bois the second sex speaks of the specific ways natural and social sciences whether it is natural sciences like physics and biology or social science like sociology and psychology and then the european literary social political and religious traditions they have created a world which produce an ideology of women's natural inferiority to justify patriarchal domination these sciences these all we can say theories they have tried to put strong chains on the claim of women to be treated equally to man uh, there are some quotes from this book if i want to define myself i first have to say i am a woman all other assertions will arise from this basic truth a man never begins by positing himself as an individual of a certain sex that he is a man is obvious here lies one of the paradoxical kind of biological division a man doesn't need to define himself why a woman has to begin by saying i am a woman that the child is a supreme aim of women is a statement having precisely the value of an advertising slogan actually simon de beauvoir is hinting at how society has made maternity or maternal pleasure one of the highest aim of womanhood her wings are cut and then she is blamed for not knowing how to fly men do not like tomboys nor blue stockings nor thinking women too much audacity culture intelligence or character frightens them according to simon de beauvoir men cannot stand equal women and the most famous line of this whole treatise one is not born but rather becomes a woman so it's a must read book i must say for all those uh, scholars who want to study feminist theory the next book we are going to talk about is the feminine mystique the feminine mystique is written by betty friedan the famous and very controversial american scholar and feminist critic she described the pervasive dissatisfaction the the all around where we, the dissatisfaction among women in post world war second period american society when women find themselves totally useless in a society where soldiers have returned and once again grab their job which they were doing while they were uh, fighting war on the borders she coined the term feminine mystique to describe the societal assumption that women could find fulfillment through housework marriage sexual passivity and child rearing alone according to these norms women is considered to perform all these duties and be happy be satisfied because this is what is decreed to them for, for friday deemed that the unhappiness and inability to live up to the femin feminine mystique is the problem that has no name it is in fact the name of the first chapter of this book with in which she says that women are not able to define their problem because it is a very abstract kind of problem the female eunuch dear friends first published in 1970 by the australian scholar germain greer is a landmark work which challenges the traditional views regarding women emancipation she basically took the metaphor of a eunuch and through the book's five chapters body soul love hate and revolution these are the five chapters of the book she built her famous motif of a woman who turns who transforms into a eunuch or castrates because she is robbed of her natural energy being trapped into domestic duties and perfect role of a wife in which there is no vitality left because she is supposed to perform she is supposed to do certain fixed jobs 
Sexual Politics by Kate Millett when it published in 1970 it caused it caused an uproar because it it was an instant sensation and a hit it is now considered as one of the first radical feminism book because it documents the subjugation of women in great literature and art why it caused sensation and what why it caused uproar because millet target four iconic four great canonical writers dh lawrence henry miller norman mailer and jean janet all these are considered uh, we can say very heavyweight writers but millet targets them and exposes how damning profile of literature's patriarchal myths and their extension into psychology, philosophy and pol politics. All these have contributed for the stereotyping of women in literature, for presenting uh, typical features of uh, uh, female identity which has once again strengthened the role and the demand of the patriarchal society. The Dialectic of Sex, once again published in 1970, obviously you can see how productive the year 1970 was for feminist theory. The Dialectic of Sex is hailed as the first book of the women's liberation movement and it put forth a feminist theory of politics. It is basically the full title of the book is the Dialectic of Sex, The Case for Feminist Revolution, written by Shulamit Firestone. It is an international bestseller feminist text. Shulamit insisted that romantic love disadvantaged put women at disadvantage by creating intimate shackles between them and the man they love because the same man is also their oppressor. It also declared that women should never be free of oppression until physical acts of child bearing and child rearing were industrialized. Rather than considered to be a glorifying act of uh, femininity or womanhood, they should be taken as a, uh, we can say, a natural production process in which female body must not be taken as only career of the future generation. Of Women Born, first published in 1976, it is a combination autobiographical writing and also feminist theory. Writer, writer is Adrian Rich and a powerful non-fiction prose examining the role of and the stature of motherhood in a patriarchal society. The book explores the modern division of labor because it relies heavily on mothers to do all kind of child rearing. It is their sole duty to give birth and then to rear their child. Rich also questions what child, childhood and motherhood demand of women emotionally. They are totally drained by this emotional pressure put by the traditional and patriarchal society. She finds the act of mothering to be both determined by and distinct from the institution of motherhood. Institution of motherhood is a quite natural, uh, we can say, institution which is found in all species. But mothering is considered to be a, gen uh, a gender specific act decided by the norms of the society ruled by the patriarchal hierarchy and it is uh, imposed upon all women everywhere. Fat is a feminist issue, first published in 1978, written by Susie Orbach, a groundbreaking work which proved to be touchstone in the critical analysis of the ways in which media and dominant culture shape the women's body images. How in different advertisement, movies, books, a uh, perfect feminine shape is described. How a figure is basically an uh, unattainable kind of figure is considered to be how various, uh, we can say, pageants like Miss Universe and uh, uh, Miss World and other pageants also, how these beauty uh, contests and concept they have basically put into depression a lot of especially teenage young uh, teenage women 
the book shows women how to avoid the dieting and binging cycle and learn practical and effective techniques to understand why why they use food to fulfill emotional and psychological needs so you can see the uh, we can say the banner which says the self help guide for compulsive eaters because compulsive eating is also associated with depression the mad women in the attic published in 1979 with the subtitle the women writer and the 19th century literary imagination written in collaboration by susan gubber and sandra gilbert it is a founding moment in feminist literary history theory gubber and gilbert, uh, gilbert offer radical rereading of many writers including jane austen the brontes including three sisters Emily Dickinson, George Eliot and Mary Shelley and they trace a distinctive female literary tradition and female literary aesthetic. You can hear uh, also remember the book uh, the famous book by Alan Showalter Towards a Feminist Poetics which I have unfortunately forget to add here. This is also a key text in creating feminist canon feminist literary canon she has also written uh, on the similar lines ain't i a woman published in 1981 it is about black women and feminism written by one of the most prolific and one of the most profound voice in america feminism bell hooks the book examines how black women from the 17th century to the present day were and are oppressed by both white men and black men and white women so they are doubly or triply marginalized they are oppressed by all sections of the society examining the impact of sexism on black women during slavery the devaluation of black womanhood black male sexism and racism among feminists hook attempts to expose racist and sexist assumptions this press called my back writings by radical women of color published in 1981 edited by sherry moraga and gloria anzaldua these are basically mexican based writers personal essays criticism interviews poetry visual art like painting collection explores uh, the complex confluence of identities race gender and sexuality which is systematic to women of color operation and liberation it laid the foundation for third wave feminism if the authors focus on intersectionality means different sort of feminism meet here discuss their particular and distinctive problems and race gender sexuality they affect the way people live their lives challenge white feminists who refuse to acknowledge these issues Sister Outsider published in 1984 by black lesbian poet and feminist writer Audrey Lorde these landmark writings are a call never to close your eyes to the terror to the chaos which is black which is creative which is female which is dark which is rejected which is messy which is so you can understand the passion with which she has written the voice of the suppressed the marginalized voice the various essays discuss the uses of anger the role of poetry in activism her own experience as a black lesbian in the us and as well as calling out white feminism for excluding and erasing black women women culture and politics read first published in 1989 written by angela white davis it is a remarkable collection of essays one of the most important names she is associated with black power movement of 60s davis has brought in valuable insights to feminist theory through her insistence that gender is meaningful only with reference to other social determinants like race class and sexuality you cannot universalize gender between two categories male and female or man or women basically race and class and sexuality also are determining factors the book addresses many issues like healthcare violence against women nuclear warfare 
ethnic studies among others. The Beauty Myth published in 1990 written by Naomi Wolf it is an iconic critique of the destructive ideals which are nurtured by the advertisement and beauty industries she questions the beauty myth which is an obsession with physical perfection which basically traps the modern women in an endless spiral of self consciousness self hatred as she tries to fulfill this impossible definition of the flawless beauty wolf also posits the idea of an iron maiden which is an unattainable standard that is used to punish women physically and psychology psychologically if they are failed to achieve that particular standard gender trouble judith butler's celebrated and controversial seminal text which deconstructs the traditionally traditional binaries of gender arguing that traditional feminism is wrong to look to an essential notion of the female butler questions the categories even the basic categories like women masculine and feminine you can look at the title subtitle itself feminism and the subversion of the identity this shows very well that how she is talking about not natural gender but as she introduces the term performativity to indicate that our gendered behavior is actually a performance that is imposed upon us by the so called normative heterosexuality and she questions this performativity okay dear friends that's all for today i hope you enjoyed this lecture and come to learn about some important texts dealing with feminist theory keep supporting keep watching and keep giving your very valuable inputs that help me to improve the quality of these videos thank you dear friends